Hey guys, how's it going? So, today I am going to do a, a review, a play or nay a review, and today I'm going to look at the game called Tangle Deep. Now, uh, this is uh, still in early access, so this is just going to be a relatively quick early access review. I'm going to attempt to keep the duration of the video below 30 minutes and then obviously when the game releases in the complete state eventually, then I will do a full like an hour long review of the game. So. First off, this is uh, this game is by a company called Impact Game Works. It is their first game, and it is a kind of a pixel graphics or 16-bit graphics uh, tactical turn-based game, and it also has quite severe, I could almost say, uh, rogue-like mechanics in the game so it is for all intents and purposes a roguelike tactical turn-based 16-bit game it's like a dungeon crawler also kind of so let's uh, quickly just first look at the different classes and then I will start explaining a little bit about the gameplay so I'm skipping all of the uh, quest dialogue or the intro dialogue since that will spoil the game a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to um, cover the story all that much because the story uh, at the beginning is explained and then in the first hour or so you learn pretty much what your role is in the world of Tangle Deep and why you are uh, doing the things that you are doing like why you are uh, exploring the dungeons and all of that kind of stuff so I'm not going to uh, spoil the story for you but basically the premise of the game follows the usual uh, dungeon crawler thing where you are a hero and you have to kill a bunch of monsters for some or another reason usually it's to uh, rescue a princess or to save a village or whatever but I'm not going to tell you what the reason is in this game you can just find it out for yourself so by the way I haven't said the price of the game yet the price of the game is $15 and also I received a review copy from the developers of the game free of charge for the purposes of this review so thanks very much to them for allowing this review to happen so uh, the game currently has 10 classes in the game there may or may not be uh, more classes added to the game or maybe some classes might be removed from the game as i said at the beginning this is early access and all things that you see in the game are subject to change so uh, first off, there is the Brigand. It's a kind of a rogue uh, uh, class. Now, first off, one thing that is very important in this game is the management of your HP or your health. Health management is incredibly important in this game and um, none of the classes actually have healing abilities. There's no healing abilities on any of the classes. There are some things like, I think it's this one. Um, let me just find that ability here. Uh, this one. So Iron Breathing is a class that the monk has. It's called the Budoka, but it's actually like a monk class. And he can or she can and by the way as you can see all of the classes are female and that is tied into the story so I'm not going to explain why that is but uh, uh, this class has a healing ability but only if you are uh, poisoned or if you have any kind of status ailments on you right now so poison bleeding uh, confusion anything like that only when you use this ability and you have a status ailment on you only then do you heal a little bit but honestly 
um, statiles uh, ailments deal quite a lot of damage in this game so um, this technique is basically only going to stop that status ailment from uh, dealing more damage on you the healing that it provides is really not that significant it's really quite a small healing it's like maybe 10 to 15 percent of your hp of your total hp that you heal when you use this ability so it's really quite an insignificant um, healing and then the paladin also uh, has a healing ability but only when you block so it's this radiant aura uh, you heal each time you block but the cooldown is four turns so there's a the, there's a cooldown on that block and it costs energy every time you block so uh, and honestly the amount that it heals is like 5 HP or 10 HP it's really insignificant even less than uh, this ability so for all, uh, for all intensive purposes there's no healing abilities in the entire game and that is because this is a roguelike game so uh, I'm just going to run through the classes quickly this is a rogue essentially uh, it has stuff like um, uh, you can jump around quickly you can throw down bombs fire bombs smoke bombs you can do a fan of knives all that kind of stuff and you can also inflict the bleeding quite a bit and it is obviously for the most part a um, melee character then there is the flora monster which is essentially like a druid type character where she summons a shitload of vines on the ground and she can also summon a little pet uh, type uh, plant thing and yeah that's pretty much it then there is the sword dancer which deals a lot of fire damage most of her stuff has to do with fire damage and yeah and then there's the uh, spell shaper which has a quite unique uh, uh, mechanic behind it wherein uh, he casts or she casts spells but you can change the area of effect of all of your spells so there's spell shape line which makes your spells shoot in a line then there's spell shape square which makes your spells uh, uh, um, have uh, the effect in a square then there's spell shift materialize which once again changes the spell shape and there's a whole bunch of uh, different uh, abilities like ice acid shadow and fire so uh, you can choose between four elements and then you can choose the attack shape of those elements and obviously if it's in uh, a line then it deals more damage to uh, the first thing that it hits than the square shape so if it's a square then obviously you deal more AOE damage but it's not that uh, that powerful against a single target but if you go for the line attack then it's more powerful against a, um, uh, a single target and also the abilities have cooldowns on them so you can't switch to a line throw one attack and then switch to uh, square immediately so uh, this character is really quite difficult to play with and you need to think ahead what your situation is uh, for like are you going to attack a bunch of enemies then you need to go to the square or are you going to attack a single target then you need to go to the line shape so this character is really quite an interesting character then the, there's the paladin uh, character which I'm going to play in this video uh, basically she is just a very tanky very defensive character and then there is the monk which uh, gets a bunch of um, uh, bonuses if you fight without using any weapons so she deals extra damage if you if she is uh, unarmed by the way you can see your abilities which is basically passives for the most part uh, here at the bottom left so those are your passives which you unlock as you progress through the game all of them aren't unlocked at the beginning and then there is the hunter which is like a ranger type uh, thing uh, she can uh, place traps on the ground and she can also 
uh, summon a wolf companion and a bunch of other stuff also a few aoe abilities and stuff like that then there's the gambler which is kind of a um, uh, combination between the brigand and the hunter so she is good at ranged and at close up and she obviously works with the car the mechanic and also she has a high amount of rng so she uh, has a lot of um, abilities which can either be good or they can't be that good uh, uh, none of them uh, have ne uh, negative effects for yourself but sometimes they are very good and then sometimes they're not that good then there is the spear character which uh, deals melee damage but at a range so she has like a two range attack so she can st uh, attack stuff that is like one block away from them uh, from her which the other characters cannot do and then she's also relatively defensive and then there is the soul keeper which is like a ranged spell uh, damage dealer so it's more like a uh, combination between the flora monster and the hunter almost so that is all of the current characters that are in the game and all of them play vastly different since all of them have different abilities it's not like this one shoots a flame bolt and then this one shoots an ice bolt and they do exactly the same damage you can trust me when i say i've played with all of the characters and all of them are really quite different and some of them can summon uh, plants and wolves and stuff like that where other can use um, uh, traps and stuff like that so each of them have their own special uh, abilities and mechanics especially the spell shaper the spell shaper is really quite unlike uh, unlike any of the un uh, other uh, characters that there are or classes that there are so uh, the game also like i said is a roguelike game so uh, this is the normal mode heroic mode wherein you progress through the levels and when you die your progress is reset so let's say you reach floor 15 and you die then your character gets reset to level one you only keep your banked goods so uh, only the goods that you put in the bank will get saved all of your other stuff gets lost you lose your money your experience your levels everything your progress through the game everything then there is the adventure mode wherein if you die you uh, basically lose everything except your levels and your progress through the game so your your levels you get to keep and your progress is just reset back to your most recent uh, save point or your checkpoint since you get checkpoints throughout the game and then you lose half of your money which is really quite punishing since money is really quite hard to come by uh, in the game and then there's hardcore mode wherein if you die you lose everything you don't get to keep your banked items like in heroic mode you lose everything and essentially your save gets deleted so it's really quite a punishing mode so you get to choose between uh, the normal mode which is roguelike then there's the adventure mode which is still roguelike but you get to keep half of your money and your experience and some of your progress and then there's the extremely difficult hardcore mode wherein you lose everything so you can choose between the different modes depending on what your play style and your preferences are so i'm going to jump into the current save which i have and uh as I said, it is with the Paladin character. I'm playing with the Paladin character and I currently am uh, about uh, two hours into the game, into this playthrough. I've done other playthroughs with other characters also. So this is the town. Uh, as I said, uh, you can choose the uh, 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 first difficulty, then you can store items. So you can store any items that you want to 
uh, keep like if you die then you can come back to the safe and you will then be able to take uh, items out of the storage but in order to put items into the storage it costs gold so you can see there the deposit cost so uh, even if you play on the normal difficulty uh, where if you die basically all of your stuff gets reset but you get to keep your stuff into the bank even then it costs quite a bit of money to uh, deposit your items into the bank so it's still really quite punishing so uh, then there is this guy that you can get healing from but it's quite expensive it costs 500 go uh, gold to heal yourself and then you can also obtain blessings which only lasts for 99 turns while you are in the du uh, dungeon so we are going to take a blessing of power and we are going to take a blessing of protection so we now have two um, blessings on us then there is this old lady that gives you quests and you can only hold three quests at a time and then there is this guy uh, this raccoon type guy that uh, sells you uh, food and then there is this little uh, rabbit type uh, cat uh, uh, Chiki that uh, sells you weapons and armor and also sometimes like potions and stuff like that so that is pretty much the town this is all that you can do in the town then there is a lower part of the town where you can uh, uh, place seeds you get seeds throughout the game that persists, uh, persists through the game so if you pick up a seed and you can plant it here then uh, you die then you can come back and harvest this the fruit from the trees on your other characters so the trees are persistent throughout the uh, game so throughout your playthrough and then this is a funny little um, place where you can get a, ha a hammer or a mallet from this girl and then when you damage a monster, that is one of the monsters that I've captured already. When you damage a monster on a low life, then you can hit them with a mallet. And then it essentially makes them unconscious. Then you bring them back to her and you can keep up to three monsters in the um, pen, basically. In the monster uh, zoo type thing. And any monsters that you have in there, you deal more damage against. So, like I have a frog uh, type character in there right now. That means that I deal more damages to other frog like characters. So, this is the game. I went through the portal now from the town. If you want to go back to the town, you click on your magic portal that takes you back to the town in 12 turns so it's not immediate so if you are in a dire situation then uh, you click your magic portal and you only get teleported back to the town in 12 turns so you have to deal with the dire situation there and then or you have to plan ahead so if you know you're going to fight a boss then perhaps you can use your uh, portal before the boss and then you engage the boss hit the boss a few times and then uh, within three or four turns from engaging the boss you can time it depending on when you want to come back to the town uh, so you can use it in that method also then let's quickly have a look through the um, uh, ability interface and the inventory interface and all of that so you can go through all of your ingredients which you can use when you are at, at the campfire to create better food and likewise uh, these are the meals that I've used or that I've uh, made at the campfire from the ingredients that I have then you have some support items like uh, tonics and health potions and scrolls and all of that kind of stuff then you have offensive stuff like grenades and stuff like that and then you have valuable stuff that is just basically stuff that you can sell or that you can use to craft certain materials like uh, weapons and stuff like that 
then there is your equipment you only have four equipment slots so you have two utility slots these are your two ut utility slots that you can equip rings and uh, cloaks and uh, helmets on so you can have two helmets or you can have two rings or you can have a ring and a helmet or you can have uh, boots and uh, a ring or anything like that and then you can have uh, one single chest armor and then a single shield or an extra sword you can also equip an extra sword in your offhand so this is basically your offhand slot so obviously i am a paladin which uses a shield and a uh, main hand weapon but i can if i want to equip this uh, sh uh, short sword in my offhand also if i so wish and then these are your four weapon slots you switch between your weapon slots by clicking here so uh, if you are uh, ranged if you want to attack with ranged then you click on this and then you can attack your opponents with that each ranged weapon has a different range so the slingshot has a three range the short bow has a four range and then i have my two melee weapons and then at the bottom here these are your abilities now you get all of your abilities here these are the abilities that i've currently learned and these are my passive abilities that are currently active and these are the two abilities that I have not yet learned. And you gain JP, which is essentially XP, uh, through killing monsters. So all of the monsters give JP. When you die, you lose all of your JP or your XP. So I need 250 JP in order to learn this ability. But if I die now, then my JP gets reset to zero depending on what difficulty you play obviously on the most hardcore uh, 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 mode if you die then you lose fucking everything so on the current uh, mode that i am playing if i die i just lose all of my saved up jp and half of my gold and my progress gets reset a little bit and then there is a bunch of stuff in your journal that you can unlock like recipes you also get rumors which is basically your quests and then you get your combat log and then there is also the uh, pretty standard uh, settings uh, where you can change your resolution your key bindings music volume footsteps volume uh, your battle text and all of that different kind of stuff there's really not anything missing here that i would want in the game so i'm not really going to go through this you can change your zoom scale and all of that also so everything is covered here that you would normally expect to be uh, in a uh, pixel graphics type uh, turn-based game so with that being said let's jump into the combat so i'm currently uh, a little bit apprehensive about going to the right since the right is uh, i'm assuming a quite difficult area so i'm going to uh, just go there and hope for the best i can go left also there's a cave on my left but um, side areas are quite difficult so I'm just going to go to the left and hope for the best now you can move uh, in any direction around you so you can move diagonally or across so uh, you need to keep that in mind and each turn that you take is a turn taken so each move that you make is a move taken and a turn taken so when you move your opponents will move also so you need to remember that that there is poison gas by the way so let's see here where my opponents are uh, anything that you break in the game also takes a turn and by the way this barrier at the bottom is uh, essentially each turn that you take you get a little bit of progress on this bar and when your bar fills up to 100% you then get an extra turn 
so you get a free turn basically and if you move through water then you uh, lose a little bit of your stamina this is your stamina which you use to use uh, certain abilities like this one uses stamina this one uses stamina but this one uses energy and this one doesn't use anything and this one uses stamina for so for the most part uh, most of my abilities uses stamina and obviously if you are a, a mage character or anything like that then you will for the most part use energy whereas this character uses stamina for the most part so you can see i've attacked this beetle with my bow down to about 34 percent hp and now i'm just going to kill it with my uh, melee weapon and it is dead and there's another one over there so this is obviously a four range so one two three four so i should be able to attack it from here and he blocked my attack you can obviously see the uh combat log here at the bottom left so i'm going to attack it a few times and these beetles charge you and then they do quite a bit of damage all of the uh, monsters in the game have different abilities obviously that is like a mad uh, chemist or a necromancer type thing he usually throws you with poison abilities so he actually can deal quite a bit of damage uh, if he throws the poison on top of you since then you need to spend a few turns to move out of the poison clouds and uh, while you are doing that you are still getting attacked by him so those characters are quite dangerous now this is a magic fountain the magic fountains give you three charges on your healing flask the healing flask is incredibly important in the game it is essentially the only healing uh, or the only dependable healing source through the entire game so as i said that at the beginning you do not have any healing skills in the game or any healing classes in the game that is because uh you are essentially put on a timer uh through not having any healing so this is your only source of healing so now when i pick it up you will see my uh, healing flask charges gets increased from 25 to 27 uh, so each time that you use it it heals you for 163 that gets more or less depending on how much health you have it's essentially a percentage of your health that the flask heals and let's say i lose 200 hp when i attack a mob because some mobs are really quite powerful some of them can kill you from full hp down to zero very easily so you need to use your flask preemptively so let's say i go up against a guy and he kills me or, or he nearly kills me then i need to use three charges of my flask just to gain full hp again so uh, I've only used basically three charges on a single level but some levels like this le these levels don't have a single one of those fountains that I've used so I've essentially gone back three charges on my flasks and then on the next level if on the next level there isn't a um, a uh, fountain either on that level either and then i use another another two flasks then i've lost five flask charges uh, and i've only progressed through one level so you see eventually you are going to run out of flask charges and you're not going to have any healing whatsoever so you are essentially on a clock you are put on a clock uh uh, to your death you will eventually die it is just a matter of when are you going to run out of healing charges so the game very heavily depends on you using your healing charges 
very efficiently. And if you engage into battles and you take a lot of damage, then you are very quickly gonna, uh, going to run out of healing charges. You're not going to make it uh, uh, make very good progress in the game. So let's talk to this guy quickly. Okay, so he's just a, basically a random uh, vendor. So let's have a look if perhaps he sells me anything that I would want. Anything that is better than the stuff that I currently have. Uh, it doesn't seem like that. Oh, this is really quite a good cap. So I'm going to take that cap. And let's see, you can see that this samurai armor uh, gives less physical resistance than my current armor, but it increases your damage, your overall damage dealt by 10% and it gives you a little bit of dodge. So uh, it is like a more offensive type armor, but to be honest, in my opinion, defenses are so incredibly important in this game that you need to prioritize defense over offense. So I just bought a new armor, so I'm going to equip the armor. And then I am going to perhaps equip this. Let's see, is it better than my current cap? No, it's not better than my current cap, but it is definitely better than the ring that I currently have. So. Uh, I then just equip the two caps. It's a little bit strange, obviously, that you can equip two caps at once. You can also equip two cloaks at once, two rings at once, two, two boots at once even. Um, but as I said that at the beginning, these are your two utility slots. So you can equip any utility items in here that you want. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit strange that you can equip two boots or two caps, but that is just how the game currently is. That may or may not change in the future. So I'm going to eat a chicken. I might have a chicken. Yes, there I have a chicken in my um, inventory. Uh, uh, or let's eat a turkey leg instead. So you just click on it and then you click on use. So. As I said, you very often need to use um, things uh, preemptively because if you engage into a battle uh, and the uh, opponent, the enemy, kills you faster than what you can gain health with because 170 HP over 5 seconds or 5 turns is essentially 30 HP per turn. So if your opponent is damaging you for 50 HP per turn, then you can see that you are going to die after only a few turns. So uh, the game very much depends on you being able to preemptively use uh, uh, certain healing abilities. So I'm just searching for guys here. You can actually activate your map also. And let's just place the map over there. That way you can see any uh, enemies moving around on your map also. So this will take me to the next zone. But I currently do not want to go to the next zone. I first want to explore the side area that is connected to this uh, zone fully so let's see here and this is another um, random vendor let's see do I want that no I don't want that is there anything else no this guy just basically sells a bunch of ranged weapons but I'm really not that interested in ranged weapons so we will then just move on to the next side area. Those steps that I saw at the beginning that I passed over uh, will take me to the next side area. Since you get essentially main areas and then you get side areas. So let's quickly kill this guy. You can see the AI is really quite uh, smart because sometimes they will use abilities and then obviously that ability is on cooldown. 
So they will move away from you until they can use that ability again and then they will attack you. So they are, uh, there's a term that's called kiting. They are kiting you around. So the AI in the game is really quite uh, smart. And this is a battle that I do not want to engage since it is an easy enemy, an average enemy and a tricky uh, enemy so uh, it is really uh, two easy enemies and a rather difficult enemy so that is an uh, a fight that I do not want to engage in so I will just escape to the next area and this is a side area so once I've cleared through this area and you can see now that the crab has inflicted me with bleeding and with disarmed so I currently cannot attack with my melee weapon so I basically have to use a, a skill on him to attack him or I have to run away so let's use that over there because if I ran away then basically I will just be taking uh, unnecessary uh, damage from him since he can still use abilities on me and all of that so this is just a place that I will clear quickly and uh, after I've cleared it I will get a little uh, dialogue bo uh, box that usually pops up which tells you that you have cleared the area. So I will use my ranged ability on that and then uh, switch back to my melee ability. So you can pretty much uh, easily see what the game is about there is a severe emphasis placed on uh, health management and uh, essentially if you cannot master the health management very easily then you are very quickly going to find out that you cannot make very good progress through the game currently i am on the seventh level of the game on the seventh level of the dungeon essentially since you're not exactly going down a dungeon uh, but you are progressing through a er uh, areas that are dungeon like they're like a dungeon so um, you progress through the quote unquote dungeon or you descend down the dungeon and the enemies get progressively more difficult and uh, on the okay so I am now disarmed again so I have to use the ability basically or I have to run away uh, on certain stages like on I think level four as far as I can remember there was a boss so uh, you go one two three and then on four there's a boss and then you progress through again like I am now on uh, level 7 so it's quite possible that on level 8 I will once again encounter a boss it's really quite possible um, so you get the general idea of progress that is made through the game you go through the normal levels you get loot you get more of those charges from fountains and then you um, every now and then will run into a boss now obviously side areas like this is a little bit of a gamble because there could be these fountains but sometimes there aren't uh, these fountains not every side area is guaranteed to have a fountain so uh, if I uh, came to this uh, area, if I moved to this area and there wasn't any fountains on this area at all uh, and I lost like let's say a thousand life and I obviously lose uh, HP and then I use my flask charges so I lost a thousand HP in total on the entire level and I didn't gain any uh, uh, flask charges since there weren't any or there wasn't any uh, fountains on the entire level 
then like I said that at the beginning you are going to eventually run into a brick wall where you're getting damaged but you no longer have any flask charges remaining so you really need to uh, work extremely efficiently with your HP if you lose a lot of HP unnecessarily and you don't gain the flask charges back again at a efficient rate then you're just going to die and that is pretty much the goal in a lot of rogue like games but this rogue like game really takes it to another level since i have to say the game is quite difficult around about uh, uh level 8 level 9 around about there the game becomes quite fucking uh, difficult since the enemies just become so difficult and you can already um, see like those crabs that I fought in the previous uh, level those crabs constantly inflict you with um, different status ailments so they are really quite a powerful uh, uh, mob they are quite a power powerful opponent because they are constantly inflicting you with status ailments and the status ailments are really quite um, uh, devastating since as you saw they inflict you with stuff like um, uh, disarmament so they disarm you so you can't attack back and they also inflict you with uh, bleeding and a bunch of different stuff that is really quite uh, devastating now you can see that this guy is a special um, guy is not a standard mob these uh, normal um, white if their name is in white then they're a normal mob you also get champion mobs which uh, basically are like mini bosses you get bosses as I said but then you also get mini bosses uh, throughout the game uh, and the mo mini bo bosses are quite um, uh, they're not rare they're quite common you usually get like one or two of the mini bosses per game and I already think that there probably is a boss there is a boss you can see his name is in yellow and he's a champion so that is essentially a mini boss uh, right there so i'm just waiting for these flames to dissipate so that i can take over this magic fountain and now we are going to fight the champion so firstly i'm going to use my divine bolt on him then he uses an, an ability to pull me closer to him and then I'm just going to bust his face. Fortunately the um, uh, holy bolt reduces the defense of the enemies so they uh, have re reduced defense. And you can see that he only hit me like twice but I lost quite a bit of HP. I lost like a hundred HP from him just hitting me twice so you can see that uh, some of those bosses can really kill you quite quickly just in a few hits honestly um, they can kill you so obviously like there also that was just a normal mob but because he caught me in that chemical gas thing uh, I really took quite a bit of damage so I'm probably just going to eat a chicken the chickens cost quite a lot of gold by the way they cost like 200 gold so they are certainly not uh, cheap or easy to come by the vendors usually just have like a few uh, chickens like maybe two chickens in total so unfortunately now i'm going to have to move through this flames but there's really nothing that i can do about that okay now I am going to take a bit of damage I need to move away defensively to there 
so that I don't pull those other extra guys towards me and so that these uh, status ailments that I have on me currently can expire. So I can just stay here and you just press space in order to pass your turn and to stay in the same spot that you are currently in order for the status ailments on you to ex expire a, a little bit. So we hit him with that. Then we attack him. Okay, so now I am facing two opponents. So now normally what I would do is I would move back to there so that only one of them can face me at, at the time since you would then be stuck there. But since I only need to give that one one more hit, I'm just going to hit him instead of moving back to there and then I can uh, further attack this guy. Let's just uh, reduce his damage a little bit. Uh, which one was it again? Reduce their attack power. It's that one that I want. And then I just keep on attacking him. You can see that he is quite powerful. He takes away about 30 HP with each and every hit. So then I'm just going to use one of my flask charges. And then I can loot all of the stuff around here. And that is essentially uh, the gist of the game. As you can see, it involves uh, working through the different levels as efficiently as possible. And you acquire loot as you go through the levels and if you are lucky, okay, this is the boss of the level. This is quite a difficult opponent. He is the guy that is summoning all of these flames around him. So we are going to have a little bit of a difficult time with him, but we should be able to kill him. I am going to preemptively pre use a flask charge. And then I am going to damage him with my divine bolt. So, as you can see, basically, uh, the game involves uh, you just using your abilities as efficiently as possible and taking as little damage as possible um, so that you uh, uh, basically manage your health uh, efficiently. If you don't manage your health efficiently, you are not going to have a very good time in this game. And you can see that he dropped a bunch of loot uh, for uh, because he was a boss. He was like the boss of the level. And you can see that even though I was at around 500 HP and I used a flask charge preemptively, which healed me for an additional 160 he still damaged me down to 300 HP. So he essentially dealt 370 damage to me, which is really quite impressive. And honestly, some of the bosses uh, are so powerful that even though you use a flask charge preemptively, uh, you still uh, wind, out, uh, wind up almost dying to them. And you basically need to run away from them and come back uh, um, and wait for your HP to heal up again uh, in order to kill some of the bosses. So we are done with that area and I believe we are done with this area also. So we can just move back to the uh, stairs in order to progress to the next level. As I said, obviously doing these side areas is risky since you could wind up uh, dealing more damage to yourself than what you wind up um, uh, recuperating basically uh, but uh, that's just one of those things that's just one of the chances that you uh, wind up taking so this is a really quite a difficult situation right now since I'm being attacked left and right and uh, there's not really a bunch that I can do about it there's not a lot I can do about it I have to keep this defensive position because if I move to there 
then that thing will move to there and then all of them can stream in here and surround me. And you can trust me when I say that being surrounded in this game is a fucking death sentence. If you are surrounded, you are going to very, uh, very quickly die. And you can see that as I am attacking this guy, those two bastards are healing him. So, uh, I am really taking a shitload of damage right now and I fortunately have gotten a level up. Uh, basically, when you get a level up, you can choose between uh, these five stats. And as you can see, my strength is really quite a bit higher than all of my other stats, because I have been stacking strength quite a lot, since it gives physical defense and it boosts melee damage. So, uh, And it basically follows the usual uh, strength agility, intellect uh, kind of uh, route that most RPG games follow. And the discipline basically just increases your pet health and your buff duration, so status ailments and stuff like that. And then there's also guile, which increases your crit chance. So it's like luck, uh, basically. So you can see it is a very basic and... Uh, uh, not very unusual character progression system. Fortunately, uh, when you level up, you uh, get full HP once again, so that is really quite good. So I just want to, oh for fuck's sake, poison. Uh, let me move out of the poison and then I can hopefully kill this one bastard. Of course, uh, that guy is constantly healing him. And then I can hopefully kill this guy. So obviously, as I said, for fuck's sakes, poison. Uh, as I said, uh, you really need to uh, work efficiently with your, your HP. And uh, you should try to not get surrounded. If you get surrounded and you cannot move away from your opponent, then it's a death sentence. Okay, for fuck's sake, this guy is just owning my ass right now. I'm taking so much unnecessary damage from him. But he is a boss, so um, it is quite normal for me to take like hundreds worth of damage from a boss like that. But that's just basically like a single healing charge. If you can kill a boss and only take like a single healing charge worth of damage from him, then it's really not that bad at all. Then you've dealt with the boss uh, relatively efficiently. So yeah, guys, that is pretty much it. Uh, that is the general um, idea behind the game. It's a dungeon crawler. It is turn-based, obviously, and it is a roguelike game. If you can't manage your health efficiently, then you are very quickly going to realize that you just get overwhelmed by the amount of damage that you can take uh, in, a, in a single um, level. And that was another mini boss right there. And when he dies, he spawns bombs underneath him. So you can really see that um, a lot of the uh, different mobs have a bunch of different abilities. And that just really makes the game um, fresh. It keeps it fresh so that the enemies don't become stale. It's not like you're constantly fighting zombies or anything like that you actually encounter a bunch of different uh, monsters. You encounter beetles and plants, like stationary plants, like that one that I just encountered, that basically just constantly shoot you with needles, and you get those bandits. The bandits can poison you, and those alchemists can also poison you. So, you see, you get a shitload of different monster variety and this is just on a single level this isn't even across a, a bunch of different levels you just encounter those enemies on this one single level so the monster variety is really quite uh, impressive also it really keeps you on your feet 
uh, on uh, uh, the different mechanics in the game. You really need to um, uh, be cognizant of the different mechanics in the game uh, in order to not uh, uh, really die very easily. So in this uh, uh, place right here, I'm going to run away until I can fight them in a concave so that so that they can't surround me. So like this, this is a really quite good uh, way to fight enemies. So uh, let's just move to there. And unfortunately, he's still targeting me with that thing. So I will just use a healing frost preemptively. And then I will smite him with this, which reduces his attack power. And you can see that my health is really quite uh, going down quite quickly. So I just need to concentrate on killing this king. Since the king is the thing that deals the most damage. And then I can deal with this one. And then I can deal with this one. This one is also... Okay, no, he's just a normal dude. So, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, I just quickly wanted to show you the game. I took a little bit longer than what I wanted to do. But, honestly, sometimes it is unavoidable. Sometimes, um, especially in a game like this, it's only an early access game at the moment. But there really already is quite a bunch of... Uh, content in the game. I've already played uh, about three hours on this playthrough and I've played about in total eight or so hours on the other playthroughs with the other characters. So in total I've already played more than 10 hours of the game and the game is early access. And if you actually go look on Steam you will see there are some people who already have like hundreds of hours uh, invested into the game. So the game, even though it is currently only in early access, already has a lot of content, a lot of playability. And as you can see now, I'm going to level 8. So I'm really doing quite good on uh, this playthrough. And as you see, as you progress uh, more and more through the game, you eventually encounter areas that are filled with lava and other different um, uh, environmental uh, difficulties you could say which makes the game even more difficult so that it ju doesn't uh, just stay the same every level doesn't just stay the same uh, every level is different and the more that you progress through the game the more difficult the game becomes eventually you run into uh, those mini bosses constantly like in the previous uh, level I ran into like two of those mini bosses but honestly uh, eventually around level 11 which is the highest level that I've reached so far and uh, before I died uh, around uh, level 11 you constantly run into those mini bosses so it's a uh, really difficult to stay alive at those levels so yeah guys that's it the game is available on Steam for $15 and the game currently is in early access. This was the early access version that I played. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of um, stuff in the game already. So you can either hold out until the game fully releases or you can uh, buy the game right now. There already is quite a lot of uh, content in the game. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot for watching. And I'll see you next time.